Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to jump right into the explanation of what this video is because it starts right now. I am talking in this video and showing you guys basic training session skills that I like to teach for an effective training session with my dog. The first one of those is learning to ignore a food bowl that's on the ground or a treat bowl of some sort that I use quite frequently that's not a treat pouch, it, the treats are in some sort of bowl. So what I'm doing with Wrigley here is I'm teaching her to disengage from the food bowl. Now this is a skill that Wrigley already knows, but this is how I'd work it up with your dog. If you've not seen my look at that game video, uh, also known as engage disengage, that is the concept that we're going for here. I would recommend watching that video for guidance here. But essentially, as soon as your dog looks away from the food bowl, that's when you're going to click and give them a treat for that. Man, I moved really fast in this video. Okay, so the thing that we're combining now here is what's called a default behavior. So Wrigley's default behavior when I am on the ground with her is offering lying down in front of me. I like this behavior. It is not something when we're in between things. This is a skill that she can jump to when she doesn't know what else to do. That's kind of the point of a default behavior. When we're in between activities, this is what she does. Now, I like the down when I am sitting on the ground, just she's kind of at my level at that point and it felt natural to her. I first trained this up with a go to place mat that you guys are seeing me work with here and we're kind of combining she's got the food bowl in play too. You guys later on are going to see me move that food bowl to different positions and I'm working on two concepts. One, I want her to station in front of me in her default down and two, ignore the food bowl that's on the ground. So right there, I expected her to come back to her mat, offer a down and she gets treats for also ignoring the food bowl as well. So you can use a mat for this and then I quickly transition to not having the mat on the ground and seeing if she can offer that same down. Now, I would recommend if you're going to use a mat for this, train a go to place behavior first to kind of get that in your dog's head. I do have a video on that. So I'd, again, recommend watching that video first, then coming back to this concept. And then I'm just randomizing things here. I'm combining concepts. When Wrigley comes back, I'm not asking her to lie down at this point. This is a behavior that she knows pretty well, but if your dog is new to it, when your dog comes back after you toss that treat away, I would ask them to lie down. You'll see me a couple times, like right here, guide Wrigley into the down when I know the food bowl is in a tricky spot for her, right in front of her nose. You can guide your dog if they need help with that. Again, right here, she has to pass the food bowl to come station in front of me. So I'm gonna help her out with guiding her into that position there. So, kind of combining concepts here. I'm moving the food bowl around into different positions. I still want the same thing from her. Offer it down in front of me. Next concept we're going to talk about is effective treating skills. It is a skill to click and deliver treats in an efficient way to your dog. I highly recommend practicing this. Inevitably though, you're going to drop treats. This is a newer skill that I'm starting to work on with Wrigley and I'm practicing it, as you can see here, to make my training sessions more efficient. If I drop treats on the ground, I want you to just ignore those treats that get dropped on the ground and continue with the exercise that we're working on. So I don't really care if Wrigley goes for the drop treats. That's going to be an indicator to me to reset my positioning in a certain way. So me actually dropping a piece of her kibble on the ground right here was way too much. She wanted to go for that immediately. So I moved to, I'm going to place the treat on the ground and then I'm going to click and treat you basically for not getting up and going for it. That's where we're starting with. I'm treating her uh, as we go on for actually disengaging with it. Again, back to that kind of uh, engage, disengage type of game. Here I had to reload on treats, so I cut away for a second, but the rest of this, you guys are basically seeing an uncut training session from Wrigley. Um, this is, again, this is kind of the first time that I have worked on this with her at all. And 
uh, you guys are seeing that whole process. So here I decided to add in a skill. Now this is going to depend on your dog completely. Are they able to pay attention to all of these things going on at once? You're dropping food on the ground while asking them to disengage from that and pay attention to what you're asking them to do separately from that. That is a whole lot to think about. Now, it was something that I wanted to experiment with and see if it would help Wrigley at all. So I spent a couple times just asking her for, uh, I'm saying the word right here, and that means for her to lift her paw up and kind of wave it at me. Um, I asked for a couple of those in, the ro in a row without dropping any food on the ground, and then I started to drop some food on the ground, or place some food on the ground. That is a lot to think about though. I would recommend adding that in after a couple training sessions of working on this. Start to ask for actual skills from your dog and just reward them for disengaging from your placed or dropped treats on the ground. Oh yeah, and biggest tip here, food tossed farther away from your dog, increasing the distance between the food and your dog's nose, it's going to work out a whole lot better. So you guys can give this a try in whatever orientation you want to with your dogs at home. Have fun with it. It's kind of just, you know, something I'm messing around with and thought I'd share with you guys. So I hope you find this helpful with training your dog at home and making your training sessions more efficient and more effective. And let me know in the comments if you guys are having questions or struggling with anything. So I hope you guys have a good week and happy training with your dogs.